Hello, my name is Aoife McLeisett and I'm a professor in genetics and I just want to give you a little flavour of what it is to study genetics in Trinity as part of the biological and biomedical sciences course. So first obvious question, well what is genetics? So at a very basic level, genetics is the study of genes, genomes and heredity. So we want to look at how traits are passed on, we want to look at how variation in the genes results in variation in the individuals that we can see around us and how all of this is structured into genomes and how those genomes work. But genetics is more than that, it's also an approach to studying biology. When you take a genetical approach to studying biology, it's a very powerful window in to understanding how things work across any area of biology. So you can look at the genetic level, looking at the molecular level, you can see how the genes work, how the changes in those genes result in changes in the organisms you're looking at, and you can understand how the mechanisms work in the various cells in the various organisms. So it can be applied in so many different ways right up to understanding human disease. And genetics can also be thought about as the language of biology and that's because it is literally a common thread that runs through all of life. DNA is present in every living thing and it is essentially the same no matter where you look. The sequence will be different but the DNA structure is the same and the composition is the same. And also more than that, the way genes work is fundamentally the same no matter where you look in biology. So the way genes work, transcription and translation in E. coli cells or in human cells have really, really strong similarities. And that means two things really. That means one is that we can study these simple organisms like bacteria and we can learn fundamental things about biology. We can learn how biology works, but we can also apply things in other ways. And this slide here, you see a picture of a vial of insulin. So when a diabetic person is taking insulin, they're usually getting recombinant insulin. So that is where the sequence of the human gene has been inserted into bacteria, turning those bacteria into little insulin factories in a sense. So you insert the human gene and it works just like it would somewhere else. It would, works just like any of the other bacterial genes. So it gets turned on and the protein is produced. But in this case, the protein is human insulin and then it can be collected and used for medicine. So in this way, we can get perfect insulin for people who need it. It's exactly the insulin that their body is missing and you're just providing what's needed. But there, there's more than that. There's other great discoveries in genetics, and I'm just giving you a little flavor here. But one of those is just understanding the molecular basis. So what is happening at a molecular level, at a DNA level, um, when we look at inherited disorders, so genetic disease? What is, what is it that's causing the disease? And then what's happening in the cell to make that disease happen? So what makes that phenotype happen? We can also think about the example, so insulin was one of them, but editing genes and biotechnology and how this can be used in uh, plant biology and how this can be used um, to produce great things in terms of biotechnology. But genetics has also allowed us to understand evolution, so that might sound surprising to some people, but genetics and evolution really go hand in hand because it's the genes that are evolving, it's the DNA that's changing, that's giving rise to all the amazing diversity that we see on the planet. And then of course there are practical applications such as in forensics where DNA fingerprinting and other kinds of gene-based and DNA-based forensics have been really, really transformational. But we can think of genetics as an underlying science of biology. And on this slide, I'm just giving you a bit of a flavor for the kinds of things that go on. And in fact, this is all work that's going on within the genetics department. So all of this under one roof. So we have various kinds of things. So we have bacterial genetics, understanding the fundamentals within the bacterial cell and how the cells communicate with each other, how the signals are passed. We, can, we also have within our department plant genetics, looking at how development works in plants, looking at very um, underlying processes in plants, but also the process of development is an extremely complex process. That is how 
uh, a single seed or a single cell will grow and develop into a complex organism. And in this case, the complex organism is a plant, but there are lots of similarities in development in terms of how it also happens in other organisms, including uh, flies like this Drosophila fly that you can see here. So we can also look at development in terms of the fly and we can think about development in terms of how your brain grows. And so there's work going on in our department about neurogenetics and how the brain grows and how the nervous system grows. And in this picture here, you can actually see that what the colors there are highlighting the growing nervous system in a fly larva and these are all things that you can explore at a genetic level you can think about how do the genetic changes and how do the genetic variants and how the differences and the commonalities between even plants and the flies and and how these how the genes drive development we also have work within the department looking at genomics so there's a picture here of the cover of the journal when the human genome project was published and members of our department were involved in that and but genomes and genomics comes into so much of what we do so so many of us are analyzing genomes and looking at them and trying to understand the variation that is contained within the genomes and also what this can tell us about how the genes work about the relationships of individuals to each other and species to each other and we see this in some of the work if you look here at this picture you can see the top here we've got a picture of Ireland and uh, Great Britain and then we've got this uh, funny diagram at the side here which is actually a phylogenetic tree so it's a tree showing the relationship of these various samples to each other and these samples have been collected from different parts of these islands and you can see the color coding there according to what's happened and when you look at the genetic variation it tumbles back out and it, the map of the genetic variation, when you analyze it statistically, comes out very similarly to the map of the islands. And this is a common thing we see in human population genetics. We see when we look at the variation around the world, it mirrors the geography very, very closely. And this tells us things about the way people move around the planet. And it tells us about uh, where the genetic variation is and the different patterns in genetic variation. But you can also do this with more ancient variation. And in this picture here, you can see that there is, that's a picture actually inside Newgrange, because um, recently from our department, we saw a work that was published where they had sequenced the DNA from uh, bones found in Newgrange. So it's a burial site. And they found an extraordinary discovery about the people that were buried there, which suggests that they were essentially a royal family just based on understanding the genetics and looking at the genetic variation there and this is possible now because it is possible to extract DNA from these ancient samples and to get sufficiently high quality DNA to be able to analyze it and the technology has just advanced so much that this has become possible. We can also see that it's possible to look at various human diseases so one Thing, one condition that has been extensively studied within the genetics department is blindness, specifically uh, a form of blindness called retinitis pigmentosa. So this is a familial inherited blindness. And work within our genetics department uncovered the genetic basis for that. So which genes are mutated, which genes have changes in them that result in this genetic condition. And then this has led on to the possibility and the start of developing possible gene therapies that would correct the error in these genes to replace what's missing and perhaps then prevent the onset of blindness. But also we have work within the genetics department which is looking at cancer from various angles. So this picture here is showing you cells that are dying but they aren't just dying randomly they're dying in a controlled and programmed way that's called programmed cell death and you see these little blebs that are coming out the side that's one of the characteristics it hasn't just exploded and burst it's been parceled into little small digestible bits which do get eaten up then by other parts of the immune system and this is a very important process it might sound a bit um 
contradictory that cell death could be important, but actually cells are supposed to die at certain points. And when they don't die, that means they're growing out of control. And that is usually um, resulting in cancer. So we can look at cancer from a genetic point of view. And so we can look at it by thinking about how the, the program cell death works, but we can also look at it by thinking about how the gene regulation works. And this happens at the level of chromatin, which is proteins that are stuck onto the, uh, onto the double helix that will activate or silence nearby genes. And sometimes what we see in cancer is that it's caused by sometimes the wrong genes being active or the wrong genes being silenced. And that's why this is a really powerful approach to addressing this enormous issue. And then we have other aspects of evolution that we also study from a genomics point of view, where we can analyze the genomes and we can think about the relationship of different animals to each other. So all of these things, so from development in plants and flies and wiring the brain, bacterial genetics, human disease genetics, human population genetics, ancient human genetics and evolutionary genetics, all of these things happen under our roof and all of these things happen in our genetics course. So is genetics the course for you? Well, um, the, the kind of people who enjoy genetics are the ones who enjoy exploring the way living things work, understanding at a fundamental level the power behind all biological systems and also the process of gathering evidence to support new theories and ideas and building up that kind of argument. All of these things come into the genetics course. If you did want to study genetics in Trinity, the way to do that is to first join the biological and biomedical sciences course. And then genetics is one of the options available to you for specializing in your third and fourth year. And I'll just point out that there's also human genetics there, which is another course that's offered by our department. And there's another video about that course. So if you're to study genetics in Trinity, what will you be doing? So there's various different modules and they cover a huge amount of the breadth of the subject. So um, one of the courses would be molecular genetics. And this is essentially looking at how genes are expressed and regulated and replicated and how things recombine and all of these processes, these molecular processes that are really, really important to genetics and how genes work. But also we will be looking at the functions what do those genes do? How do they interact with other genes? And how do those come together to create the processes we see or the, the phenotypes we see, the shapes and sizes and the different traits that we can see in different organisms? As I mentioned already, developmental genetics. So we can think about how genes guide the process of development in animals and in plants. We can look at the similarities and the differences between those and those similarities and differences can be really instructive and really informative. So we know obviously that animals and plants are very different and the developmental processes are really exciting and really interesting to explore. Also within the course, we look at evolutionary and population genetics and genomics. So this is looking at how the DNA sequences and the genomes change over time within populations. So you could compare various humans to each other or you could compare lots of cattle to each other, or you could compare lots of fish to each other, or lots of plants to each other, or you can look between species. So what are the differences between us and other mammals? And we can look at those kind of differences as well. And we can think about what are the processes that are generating this novelty? What are, um, the, what are, and what are the patterns? And how does this novelty give rise to the interesting traits that we can see around in different life forms? We can also look at genetics in terms of disease and looking at human genetic disease and gene therapy. And I mentioned the example already of retinitis pigmentosa. And so there are other genetic diseases that could be studied and um, where the, and we can also start learning about how do you start to develop a gene therapy. This is also something that comes up in the course. And then there's cancer genetics. So looking at genetic and epigenetic factors that can influence an individual's risk, their, their cancer risk. 
And then the students, apart from lecture courses, there's lots of really practical courses. So there's analytical and molecular genetics laboratory classes where you'd be studying learning techniques, analyzing data. And we also have um, analytical data, data analytical courses where you'd be coding and doing statistics. And this is a really, really important aspect of modern biology because one of the things that we see with modern biology is we've got tons and tons of data and we want to be able to analyze that data we want to be able to understand the genomes we've got lots of genome sequences now so this is a really really important skill for being a scientist and it just so happens it's also a really important transferable skill so what could you what could you expect then if you were a student of genetics in trinity so you can expect a really broad course that covers the breadth of genetics. It's taught by leading experts in the field. The lecturing staff in our department are active in research. They're publishing papers, sometimes the papers that you might be studying. Um, in our third year, with our, so the first year that you'd be in our department, so your third year of your course, you, we take a field trip um, just within Ireland, usually the Dublin mountains in recent years, but it's a really, really fun experience. And you can see a picture here of uh, a group of us after we had just, actually, I think it's at the summit, we went for a little walk um, just in the area where we take the, the field trip. And the field trip is really good fun. It's, um, it's a time when students are presenting their own work. So it's a really exciting and momentous time in that regard in terms of it being an important milestone in your education and your development but it's also really good fun and uh, we get to know each other well and in your fourth year um, you'll do a research project which is a really important experience and that will allow you to get experience in the lab it's really important training and it's one of the best things you do. I think everybody really loves their project. And while you're doing this, you'll have the uh, advantage of state-of-the-art research facilities. We also have opportunities for our students to travel abroad for some summer lab placements. So we have a few scholarships, which, we, uh, which the department has been providing for many, many years at this point. They've been sponsored by the American Ireland Fund. And um, our students go on those scholarships, but other students also look for research placements. So there's a lot of our students have a big adventure in between their third and fourth year. The other thing I suppose is that it's a really friendly department. It's a fun place. The students like it. They enjoy spending time in our department and it's a challenging and it's a well-respected degree course. So um, life as a genetics student, you'd be based in the genetics department building. Um, there's study space provided, so it really becomes a home for the students. And there's an atrium area for breaks and lunch and gatherings. You can see here there's a, a, a party going on and um, there's lots of social events. And also um, there's a genetics society run by the students, which runs events. And that's pretty active and has lots of fun. So our students work really hard. It's a really challenging and demanding course, but they also have fun and have a really supportive environment within our department. Our graduates do really well. So this is a picture of some of our recent graduates. And really, they leave with a very, very good degree. So they have an up-to-date knowledge of genetics and they get experience in lots of different things, analyzing, analyzing and interpreting data. They have oral and written presentations of difficult scientific material. And these skills are really, really important in science, but they're also really important in lots of other things as well. And so, um, we do see that our students, when they leave, they have lots and lots of opportunities. Many of them choose to go on and do a higher degree, but they also take other kinds of careers. So other kinds of careers in science, um, some of them go into medical fields, maybe business or finance, consulting, there's some entrepreneurs, um, charity work, charity sector work, and many, many more things. Um, one of our students actually joined the circus. Um, if you're listening, you know who you are. Not exactly an obvious career path afterwards, but um, it uh, just goes to show there's a huge diversity. So I hope that gave you a good flavor for what it is to study genetics in Trinity. I hope you find it interesting. I hope you um, want to come and study our course and that we'll be meeting you. Mm -hmm.